Hi, I'm conductor Ken David Mazur. Uh, a very special hello from backstage at Carnegie Hall in New York City. And I'm very much looking forward to heading over to the West Coast to be with the Berkeley Symphony for a program of Beethoven Ninth Symphony, which is always such a special uh, thing to collaborate on with the musicians, the forces of the chorus, uh, of the orchestra, the soloists, and of course, uh, to be together with the audience to experience this piece is always something very, very special, especially since I grew up uh, performing this work uh, as a little a boy in the uh, children's chorus of the Gewandhaus in Leipzig, my hometown uh, in Germany, where the Ninth Symphony of Beethoven was uh, a New Year's tradition and still is. Uh, several performances are done there every year to ring in the new year or also to celebrate uh, what happened in the past year. Um, a piece and a work that of course uh, has been uh, performed everywhere in the world and um, that is towering um, among the achievements of composers uh, of any genre of any time period uh, of a master who was recognized as a master by his contemporaries, of course, Beethoven, uh, who had been through a lot personally, who had um, been a tremendous performer, thinker, um, and humanist, uh, and in many ways a person who has sought to find out what the meaning of life is um, beyond himself, beyond everyone. Um, and so the Ninth Symphony begins, first of all, after he hadn't written many, many years uh, any symphony, which in itself is significant because uh, the first eight symphonies were written uh, in almost as long a time period um, as there was a gap between the eighth and the ninth, which is approximately 11 years. And so uh, the ninth symphony is certainly something of this uh, very personal statement of a man who of course has gotten uh, deaf and who uh, had felt even more isolated from the world, uh, mocked and um, in some way um, separated. And so uh, for him to, to write this, this work that not just captures his own personal uh, struggle and emotion, but something that would be identifiable for all humankind is, is really something powerful. The work begins um, with seemingly the um, elements coming, being drawn together um, by God, by this power, this almighty power. Um, the creation seems to um, be happening before our, our very eyes. Uh, and of course we, we hear it, we sense it. Um, there is this electricity in the air and um, then a few moments into the opening, uh, there is of course the big eruption um, that seems to call for this uh, tremendous, um, tremendous impact uh, of a beginning of something that is going to unfold from here on in, that uh, gives something powerful, makes a powerful statement, but also creates a great sense of suspense that um, of course is uh, then developed at also in the second movement, the third movement, before we even get to the choral movement, uh, which is the fourth. And um, the fact that uh, the audience would see the soloists or see the singers uh, of the chorus 
uh, lined up to be performing but not knowing when it may be um, was uh, very suspenseful in itself and so uh, the opening is in some ways such a thriller and a thrill to um, perform all the time because you want to be able to create this long um, arch of, of um, curiosity, of suspense, and of exploration, if you will. Um, and then the uh, scherzo, the second movement, which has this uh, timpani, uh, you know, it's, it's, in, a, it's in a dance uh, rhythm, the, you know, in a triple meter, one, two, three, one, two, but extremely excited and uncontainable and um, not danceable because it's so fast, but um, something that is so sparkling with uh, energy and and burst of of things here and there, and um, so that's a very extraordinary thing. Um, the uh, third movement of uh, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony is in some ways really the, the uh, for me, the soul, the heart um, of the whole symphony, um, which of course is monumental in its length over an hour long. A typical performance will last between 65 and 70 minutes. Um, and over the years, uh, many of the great conductors have um, explored this adagio movement in many ways, uh <coughs> some of them extremely drawn out, almost uh, in a sense never ending, some in a more floating, moving way um, that uh, seems to be completely at peace um, and and uh, be void of, of any conflict that um, any of the other movements may have hinted um, towards. And so between the first two movements and uh, of course the uh, big finale with the chorus and the soloists um, that uh, will sing to the words of Friedrich Schiller um, the Ode to Joy, uh, this movement is something of a very serene and um, pastoral uh, uh, movement, if you will, to, to calm us down and to, to let us uh, experience peace and uh, to prepare us for um, the confrontation with the heavenly creatures, if you will, and for the wish and for the call uh, to unity and uh, to brotherly and sisterly love. Uh, in fact, uh, I grew up in Leipzig um, near the uh, Schiller House, where Schiller actually stayed when he was in Leipzig and where he wrote the Ode to Joy uh, I remember visiting uh, the Schiller House uh, many times when I was little. In fact, uh, I also took my own children now to see the Schiller House. And, uh, you know, it's always very special to go and realize this small room where he uh, uh, penned these words uh, so intimate in, in a neighborhood of, the, uh, of a little um, uh, castle. Uh, the Golis and Schlösschen of the area um, that's right next door, very, very quaint and, and beautiful with uh, lots of castle gardens and the greenery. And uh, of course, in Leipzig, to be able to do this with the Gewandhaus Orchestra and going up, uh, performing it with my father, uh, watching him do it is a very special thing for me because for so many years I, I sang the soprano part, um, and uh, to be performing it and conducting it is always very special and brings back really, really beautiful memories. So for me to be performing it with the Berkeley Symphony 
uh, is, is going to be a joy. I'm very much looking forward to it and uh, to getting to know the audience and uh, the collaboration with all the wonderful musicians and the choirs that are participating and of course the soloists that are going to be singing. So I'm very much looking forward. <laughs>